same situation I had in Canada in 2000. I turned out to be all right, and I hit a pretty good one there, too. It probably makes uh, Rory McIlroy's uh, ascent to the number one spot even sweeter feeling Tiger Woods' heat, 62 by Tiger, who gave him a little bit of a scare, I would have to imagine. Yeah, Sunday was the best final round of Tiger's career, and still he couldn't catch Rory McIlroy. Top 10 performances that fell short. Great performances that were just not as great as the other guy, or as the kids are calling it, the John Oates Top 10. March 20th, 2005. LeBron James torches the Raptors for a career-high 56 points, at the time becoming the youngest player in NBA history to do so. Unfortunately for King James, the Cavs ended up losing that game 105-98. Game 7 of the 1991 World Series is often remembered for Jack Morris's 10-inning shutout performance. But Brave starter John Smoltz had a pretty good game himself, throwing seven and a third shutout innings, giving up just six hits but it was Morris and the Twins that took home the title. In 1978, Affirmed won the coveted triple crown of thoroughbred racing, but a young horse named Aladar made it very close in all three races. Aladar on the outside driving, Affirmed and Aladar hits apart. Affirmed's got a nose in front as they come onto the wire. 1980 Wimbledon final. Bjorn Borg was serving for the title before John McEnroe forced what is known simply as the tiebreak. McEnroe prevailed in an epic 22-minute back-and-forth tiebreak, but eventually lost in the fifth, handing Borg his fifth straight championship. In his rookie year with Philadelphia, Ron Hextall led the Flyers to the Stanley Cup final. Hextall received the Conn Smythe Trophy, despite his team losing to the Oilers in seven. Not to be outdone, Jean-Sebastien Giguere accomplished the same feat in 2003, recording a 15-6 playoff record with five shutouts, only to see his Ducks lose the cup to the Devils. April 20th, 1986, in Game 2 of the Bulls' first-round matchup against Boston, Michael Jordan scored an NBA playoff record 63 points, but the Bulls lost the game and the series, getting swept in three straight. We told you it might be a candidate for fight of the year. We didn't know it would be a candidate for fight of the century. Mickey Ward and Arturo Gotti had arguably the most epic trilogy of fights in boxing history. All three matches came down to a 10th round decision, with Gotti losing the first bout before winning the next two. He's going to see 60 shots before he's through. Well, we'll see. Ron Tugnut actually ended up seeing 73 shots in a 1991 overtime game against the Bruins, putting up an incredible 70 saves in the process, but still needed one big save to salvage a tie. Hope, loose, hot. I said we would be here a while, but this is outrageous. Wimbledon 2010. Nicholas Mahout and John Isner played in the longest match in tennis history, spanning three days and 11 hours of play before Isner finally put an end to the epic match. June 3rd, 1995. Pedro Martinez pitches nine innings of perfect baseball for the Expos, but his team failed to score any runs, sending the game to extra innings. After the Expos took a 1-0 lead, Martinez surrendered a leadoff double to Biff Roberts in the bottom of the 10th. And even though his team beat the Padres, Pedro was not credited with a perfect game. Sports Center Top 10 is brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Think fresh, eat fresh. After the break, 